Okay, so we've washed our model and we're ready for highlighting. But what is dry brushing? Nick speaking and welcome to this video. Uh, right, time for another Back to Basics video and in this one I want to cover dry brushing. So we've already base coated and washed our model and we are now ready for highlighting. And dry brushing is probably the most simplest way to highlight your models. Uh, now potentially this technique is frowned upon by some top end painters um, but at the end of the day, even top-end painters will be dry brushing some of their models um, in certain circumstances. Um, and it's a technique which um, it's well worth uh, learning to do. Uh, some people find it easier than others. But hopefully this video is going to help you there. Um, as always, the video is aimed for beginners. So let's have a look at dry brushing. Okay, so let's have a talk about dry brushing. Um, a very simple technique. I've heard of people that struggle with it still, even though it's quite simple. I think it's one of those things really, um, it's just a case of uh, practicing with it. Um, and it's a very, very useful technique, even though it is so simple. So what is dry brushing? Uh, well, first of all, let's have a quick look at the actual dry brush itself. So this is a Games Workshop dry brush. Now I know we've covered brushes in the previous video, um, but a dry brush is generally a slightly stiffer brush. Um, now the thing to note with a dry brush is you will ruin it quite quickly. These, these um, bristles here will splay out quite quickly when using dry brushing. Uh, so be prepared for your brush to run out quite quickly. Um, splayed brushes are still usable, you can still do dry brushing with them, uh, but they'll be a bit messier. And that brings me straight on to the next thing that I want to mention um, in this video, is that dry brushing is generally quite messy, so you want to do it quite early on during the painting process. Um, if you leave your dry brushing to the end, maybe after you've done all your other highlights, you think, oh, now I'm just going to dry brush that, and you dry brush it, you generally will mess up what you've already painted. Um, so the advantage of going in doing, doing it first, before you've done any other highlights, is if you do make a mess of it, it's very easy just to go back in and re-base base coat whatever you've base coated. So that's another very key point, is do all of your dry brushing early on in the painting process. Uh, so why would we dry brush something? Uh, so the things which are ideal to dry brush um, are things with a lot of detail um, that would take forever just to get your brush and highlight each individual section. So for example, if you had um, a fair coat, uh, maybe a wolf pelt for example, something that's got a lot of, a lot of detail um, but to paint every individual fur would just take forever. Another good thing uh, for dry brushing is hair, for example. You could go in and individually paint in each strand, but dry brushing that hair just is much simpler, quicker and easier to do. Um, and of course we're talking about beginner and basic painting here, so dry brushing is an ideal example for when painting things like hair and fur. Uh, now the other thing which is quite uh, useful uh, is what we call over brushing. So over brushing is like dry brushing, which I'm going to show you obviously some examples in a minute, um, but it's like a dry brush, um, but it's almost like a, this is going to sound funny, but it's going to, it's going to be a wet dry brush. So in other words, you're going to use exactly the same techniques as dry brushing, but the paint is going to be a slightly wetter on the brush than when you're doing a dry brush. Okay, there's one last thing I want to just quickly just touch upon before we actually do some dry brushing, um, and that is uh, Games Workshop's uh, dry brush paint, or dry paint as they call it. Um, it's basically a paint which isn't quite as wet, it's more powdery. Um, it works really, really well. I've used it myself, I've used the Riser Rust uh, when I was doing my rust effects, um, and I thought it was fantastic. Um, having said that, uh, I used it once, put it back in my paint pots, when I got it out a few months later, it all dried up, it was ruined, and I had to put it in the bin. 
Um, subsequently, I used um, an orange paint, just a normal orange wet paint, um, and I just dry brushed with that, um, and I got exactly the same results. So it's not essential to have a dry paint. You can do it with just a normal paint as well. Okay, so uh, let's actually have a look at doing some dry brushing. So let's just move the camera out a little. So I've got a piece of tissue here. Now you could use a cloth or something as well. I find tissue is quite good um, because it uh, allows you to spread out your bristles and actually physically see and find that when you use a cloth, uh, where you use it sort of quite often, uh, sometimes the cloth can have so much paint on it that it's difficult to see how much brush, uh, how much paint you've got on your brush. At least with a new piece of tissue, every time you can easily see what's going on. So I've got a couple of things that I want to dry brush here for you. Uh, first of all, I've got the wolf head, uh, which is going onto my base. Okay, so I just adjusted the uh, camera exposure, etc. So I have this wolf head here, which obviously he's got fur on. And this is an ideal subject uh, to actually do some dry brushing. So I'm going to get my tissue here. Now I'm going to dry brush this with uh, bleach bone. So let's get some bleach bone. I'm calling it bleach bone, it's actually shabti bone. Uh, so I'm just going to open up the pot of paint, put some onto my palette. So I've just got my palette here, which we've talked about in a previous video, uh, ideal for dry brushing. So I've got some paint on my brush, and now I'm going to use this piece of tissue paper uh, just to rub the paint off. Now I've had a, I heard a comment of someone saying, doesn't matter how much I try to dry brush, um, it always seems like there's no paint coming off um, onto the model. And I think one of the reasons for that, something which I've noticed, is that the first time you put the paint on and you, you dry it off so that it's dry, uh, you don't tend to get much. You've almost got to build up some paint on this brush. So I find that I have to actually put the um, paint on and sort of dry brush it off onto the cloth. Uh, maybe about two or three times before the actual paint is within the bristles itself. So you can see here there's not much coming off but there is a little bit coming off. So what we're going to do is get our uh, wolf head and uh, just lightly just dry brush it. So I'm literally going to just run over the model using backwards and forwards motion and uh, I can see here that that paint is just very lightly coming off on all of the raised areas. Like so. It's very, very simple, but very, very effective. Okay. So that's that done. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some white and I'm going to add a little bit of that to our mixture. So we've got a slightly lighter colour coming on now. So again, just take the paint off. And we're just going to go in and just give it a slightly dry, slight dry brush, a little bit lighter than the first one. So we don't want it to be too overpowering. This is just like a little highlight. Okay, job done. That's pretty cool, looks like fair. So that's that one. Now the other dry brush that I want to do uh, in this video is on this base. Now in the last video when I did all the washes, I actually washed this resin base, which I'd primed grey. Uh, I washed it with a black wash, quite a thick heavy black wash. And uh, I've got a bigger dry brush which I'm going to use for the base. So in this particular instance, the first, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with a black dry brush. So I'm just going to get some black paint. So again, I'm going to put some of that black onto the palette, just on here, like so. And then I'm going to get my cloth or tissue. Just going to rub this off now. Looking for the paint to be there, but not to be like a big blotch of it. So now I'm going to just dry brush this. 
I'm actually going to go in circles on this because I don't want to have any uh, like um, stroke marks, like any lines as such. So I want the pattern to be quite random as such. So I've gone in now with the black dry brush and just rub that black off. Now when you're dry brushing with different colours it doesn't really matter too much if you um, use the same brush because the, the colours will just sort of mingle into each other unless you want a very specific colour. So next I'm going to do a dry brush of a Codex Grey. So I'm just going to get some of that on my brush. You can see that black is sort of irrelevant. Now because we're doing a base and it's a much bigger area, um, I'm okay to have a, a reasonable amount of, of paint on there. So I'm just going to go over this with the grey. Trying to get like a stony, weathered effect. Okay, so that is that one. We're now going to go in with a slightly lighter grey, going to go in with Celestra grey. And this time I'm going to use that smaller brush. So I'm going to put this onto the palette and then again wipe it off. And the reason why I'm using a smaller brush is because I want to just really hit the raised areas of this um, so I can get a bit more control with the smaller brush. I'm just going to go over the hold of this base. can really start to see the edges of the rocks being highlighted but we still have that sort of dirty rockery feel to the rest of it like so and now I'm going to go in with the white which is already on the palette first of all I'm going to mix the white with the grey on here to give me sort of an intermediate um, colour and then I'm going to again just take that off and brush and uh, slightly lighter so I'm going to hold the brush right at the back this time so that I've got a bit more control to do a light brush. I'm, I'm hardly hitting it but because we're using that very light colour it's uh, coming out quite nicely. I think it's just practice really with doing dry brushing. Okay, and then very lastly, I'm just going to go in with that pure white. And again, just a real, real light dry brush just on the edges. Okay, excellent, there you go. Now what I'm going to do on my one is I'm going to go back in with the black wash and I'm going to re-wash this sort of sandy area underneath uh, the rocks just to uh, bring the detail back down on them and give the, the actual base a bit more depth. But um, that's basically how I dry brushed the base. Okay, <clears throat> so we know how to dry brush, so what else could we use it for? Could we actually highlight our marine using dry brushing? 
Well, the answer is yes, absolutely. You could just highlight the marine with that dry brushing technique. Um, it's a very quick, simple and easy um, technique to do highlighting it. But what you have to bear in mind is obviously, for example, if I was gonna highlight that yellow, um, and let's just say I'm gonna go in Yushanti Bone to highlight it. Um, when I dry brush, as I said, it's gonna be incredibly messy, as you've probably just seen as I'm dry brushing some of that stuff there. Um, so you wouldn't necessarily base coat everything first. Um, you, what you would do is just paint the yellow area, you'd then get your Shabti Bone dry brush and you'd dry brush everything um, over. You would then go in and base coat your red, base coat your metal, etc. Um, so you have to bear that in mind. As I said, dry brushing is incredibly messy. Um, and what it will do, it will obviously hit the edges and it will give you um, a highlight. Um, it will obviously get onto the yellow armour as well, so it's going to be, it's not going to be as clean and as nice looking. Uh, the quality isn't going to be quite as good, uh, but it's a nice, simple, quick and easy way to get your models highlighted very, very quickly. And indeed, it certainly works with certain models, probably more than others. So if you were highlighting, let's say, um, a Necron Warrior or say a Tyranid monstrous creature, maybe you could just dry brush that and again get a good result very, very quickly. If you're after quick results, dry brushing is definitely a good technique uh, to master. Um, we, of course, are not going to dry brush this model. We're going to do edge highlighting, which I'm going to cover in the next video. Um, we're also going to do some blending, etc. So there's definitely more to come in the series. Um, but that's uh, how you dry brush stuff. Now, there is another technique which I've talked about called um, overbrushing, uh, or what I would normally name as wet dry brushing. And that is when you have something that you want to dry brush like, now I don't have an example to show you, but let's just say you were dry brushing a chain mail. So you had a model that had like a chain mail section on it. Um, now, if you do a dry brush of silver, say on that chain mail, what you'll find will happen is it will be quite a, a thin um, coat. It will only just hit the edges. So if you want to completely fill the chain mail itself with silver, um, but leaving the recesses, um, which you like, the, all the holes basically. Then what you would do is you'd get your dry brush and it'd have a slightly wetter consistency. Let me just see if I can do this with the black paint. So I've got my black paint here, <clears throat> and I would rather than just dry brushing it right the way off. I'd just get it to a consistency where there's paint on there, but it's not particularly dry and it's not particularly wet. And I've got nothing to actually do an example on, but I use, if I use my finger you can see that I can nicely go over something uh, and leave, obviously if there were like uh, holes in there from the chain mail, the holes wouldn't actually be affected. Uh, so if you'd already say base coated it silver, you'd then say uh, washed it um, with a black wash, all the black washes in the holes, and then if you do this over drying, uh, over brush technique, you then will then just highlight back up the silver areas, leaving all of the, the recesses and all the little holes with the wash in. So again, it's another technique to use, uh, not just on chain mail, but on quite a number of things really. So it's worth experimenting with uh, over brushing and dry brushing. They're two really good techniques to, to have in your arsenal. And they're both very simple, it's just a case of having a go. Okay, so uh, that is it for this video. Um, I really do hope that it was useful. Um, thanks for watching, of course, as always, and I'll see you in the next episode.